insulin resistance is a true pandemic. The world has never seen anything like this. And I'm going to talk in this video about five blood tests. If you want to understand insulin resistance and how insulin resistance can lead to these blood tests being abnormal, and you will barely hear this mentioned by the medical establishment, even though every other person now has insulin resistance, more than every other person, I don't understand how every single doctor out there isn't waking up in a cold sweat over this issue. Because it's unprecedented, it's affecting more and more young people, and the health consequences are catastrophic. I've made lots of videos before on what insulin resistance is. I'll include a link down below, but I'd really like you to know about these five blood tests. Number one, fasting insulin level. You got that? A fasting insulin level. I cannot understand for the life of me why more doctors don't understand the fasting insulin level. Actually, I do understand it. It's because the physician societies and authorities aren't clued in. Because traditionally, what is looked at for prediabetes and type 2 diabetes is the fasting glucose and the HbA1c. Those are the tests that most people know about. And fair enough, I'm not saying those tests are useless. But the problem is that insulin resistance has been developing for years, sometimes a decade or more before it shows up on those tests. And it's like looking at a bridge or a dam and waiting for it to burst or break before doing anything about it when it's been silently building up for many years. So a fasting insulin level will enable calculation of the HOMA IR. That is homeostatic model assessment of insulin resistance. So you get a fasting insulin level at the same time as a fasting glucose level, and then you calculate the HOMA IR, and you want it to be as close to one as possible. As it starts creeping up towards two, it indicates insulin resistance. And as it goes up even more to three, four, five, it often indicates full-blown type 2 diabetes. But if you want to understand insulin resistance, then you should understand the value of checking a fasting insulin level. In fact, I've heard loads of stories about people who get told by their doctors, oh, your fasting glucose and HbA1c are fine. You're okay. Clearly, this person is not okay. They've been getting unwell. They've been putting on weight, falling into some bad lifestyle habits. But if you check their fasting insulin level, it is a way off. Okay. Number two, triglycerides and the LDL bad cholesterol. Now, of course, everybody's heard about these tests. They are part of the cholesterol panel. So triglycerides and LDL will often, in fact, most of the time nowadays when they go up, it is because of underlying insulin resistance. How many doctors, members of the medical profession will even talk about this or even know about it? They're easily 10 to 15 years behind. Because, of course, we know that the current paradigm is, oh, your cholesterol levels are high. Let's throw a medication at it. But what about the upstream insulin resistance? And what happens now in most people is that excess carbohydrates and sugars are converted into fatty acids via a process known as de novo lipogenesis. And then it is reflected with elevated triglyceride levels and LDL levels triglyceride levels, you want them to be under 150. That's the traditional cutoff. Ideally, you want them closer to 100 or even less. LDL cholesterol, well, I'll have to make a whole separate video on this. I've made videos already. But of course, we know authorities are getting stricter and stricter about the bad cholesterol. But I want you to understand that if people have insulin resistance, it is most commonly nowadays associated with a high triglyceride and high LDL bad cholesterol. So reverse the insulin resistance naturally, and these levels will often go down. Number three, elevated liver function tests, LFTs, what are known as transaminases. These are blood tests also abbreviated to ALT and AST. I will tell you this, nowadays when I'm routinely looking over blood tests in the hospital, the amount of younger and younger people who sadly haven't been taking good care of themselves, they are significantly overweight. And you look at their liver function tests and the ALT and AST will be elevated slightly. I mean, it won't be in the hundreds, but it might be in the 40s, 50s, 60s. And there's nothing else wrong. And they'll have a scan of the liver and we will see fatty deposits in the liver, what we call fatty liver disease. 
And it's so tragic because the liver is basically inflamed and insulin resistance is what has led to this inflammation. So remember that, elevated liver function tests. Number four, CRP, C-reactive protein. This is one of my favorite tests. I believe it's underutilized in the hospital. I use it all the time to track the progress of infections, inflammation, but actually it's a really good inflammatory marker in general. And there's a strong association with underlying insulin resistance. So you want it to be in the low single digits, but in somebody who is inflamed, insulin resistant, overweight, it will be mildly elevated. And that goes with the insulin resistance. And number five, uric acid levels, most commonly associated with gout and elevated uric acid level, but it's actually also kind of an inflammatory marker as well. And that test, which should be in the low single digits as well, will frequently be elevated in people with insulin resistance. So I'd like you to remember those five blood tests. Fasting insulin level to enable calculation of the HOMA IR. Number two, the lipid cholesterol panel, specifically the triglycerides and LDL. Number three, liver function tests, LFT, specifically the ALT and AST. Number four, CRP, C-reactive protein. And number five, uric acid levels. All of those tests have a strong association with insulin resistance. We could mention some other notable blood tests as well, like vitamin D and testosterone, but focus on those five. And I do believe that the medical establishment will eventually catch up with this catastrophe, which is showing up on so many people's blood tests at a younger and younger age. And it's sad that I, as a doctor, need to be sitting here and really hoping that the medical authorities catch on to this. They will eventually. That's always the pattern of things. Eventually things get too far. It's like those doctors in the 1950s and 60s who were sitting there talking about the dangers of smoking while your typical doctor was smoking on ward rounds and in clinics. Can you imagine that? But yes, that actually happened. And that's always the way things go. Unfortunately, humans and the medical profession, of course, is comprised of humans. Things often get too far before the herd wakes up, but eventually the world will wake up to the insulin resistance pandemic. And the great news is that anybody with insulin resistance can naturally reverse this. And I will include a link down below to my video on how to naturally go about this process. Thanks everybody for watching. Do feel free to comment down below. And if you are somebody who has insulin resistance and would like to go on the journey, towards better health and natural fat loss as well. Check in the links down below for my MetThrive method, specially designed 30-day Kickstarter. We've had a lot of good reviews for that, only if you are committed and serious about this journey. Also in the links down below, links to my website, all the other work I do, and my free newsletter. If you're not already signed up for that, why not? Make sure you are. And also our natural health and well-being store, ohiwellness.com. If you're in the USA, North America, ohiwellness.co. If you're in the UK, Europe, take care, everyone. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Do share it with anyone else who may benefit. And if you enjoyed this video, you will also enjoy some of my other videos on how to naturally optimize metabolic health. Keep going, everybody. I'm rooting for you all to succeed as naturally as possible. We will speak again very soon.